Hello there and welcome back to another video for Final Fantasy XIV with me, Mioni. Today we're looking at the Valention's Day 2024 rewards and how to get them. So essentially the first place you need to go is New Gradania. So obviously here we're here in New Gradania and we need to use the mini etherite to teleport over to Miketo's Amphitheater in Old Gradania. Over here, look, next to the Whistling Miller. And then you will find this year's event quest in the actual amphitheater itself. The quest itself is called The Symbol of Love. You must be level 15 or above to actually take part in this particular quest. There is also a vendor nearby as well, just before we get ahead of ourselves, called The Purveyor of Love, just on the outside of the amphitheater. This character will actually sell you the other event item this year, which is the Heart Chair. Now, last year we had the Valentione's Heart Table, this is the heart chair to go with it, so I would highly recommend you pick up a few of these because they are currently, uh, obviously the tables from last year are currently worth £2.88 or $3 I think it is in the United States on the cash shop. So if you want to get a few of these instead of having to worry about uh, buying these in the future, you should definitely pick them up. It says, this charming wooden chair bears an adorable heart motif, making it clear not only by the comfort of its fluffy pink cushions, but its very form factor that it is a product of love. Let's buy a few of those. Yeah, let's just, just get, a, get a few of those. The other items you can buy on the vendor include uh, different foods. So we've got white chocolate food, heart chocolate food, their EXP buffs as usual. And then you've got some fireworks, prismatic heart left and right, which are left side and right side of a firework display. Uh, for the actual items themselves, though, and the actual quest, you need to obviously do the quest over here being level 15 or above from Astrid. We're not going to show the storyline because that's spoilerific, and we'll be back when we have the reward. And just like that, after finishing off that particular quest, there's only one quest um, that involves you going and talking to an NPC and coming back to get a reward. I was actually very surprised at how short this was. Um, once you have finished the symbol of love, which involves talking to an NPC and coming back, you get the love heart emote, as you can see. And that is pretty much it for the main reward. There is actually a follow-up quest line, uh, which obviously has more storyline involved in this. Yeah, if you just finish this quest, there is actually a really nice uh, follow-up to this where you use the emote against NPCs. You go around and you spread love. Um, but essentially, once you have completed that, you will get the achievement. So don't miss out on the 10 achievement points um, if you're all about that. Definitely do the follow-up quest line. Uh, but that's all you get from that. Um, no title associated with it, just 10 achievement points. So if you're only after the emote, that's all you have to do. So this is quite alt-friendly in that regard. So the emote itself is actually added to the persistent section, so it's on the special section. If we go down here, it's just near the lo uh, lolly hop, uh, lally hop and the lop hop, if I could speak, and uh, just above stuff like squats if you have those. And uh, looks pretty great, actually, as, as you can see right here. It is an animated emote with audio and particle effects. It is really cool, actually. There doesn't seem to be any differences from what I've seen of other people with different races, but it is persistent. So once the spell effect has faded, you still stand in that position. So it's perfect for G-Pose. It's not like you have to time things specifically. Although if you do want the spell effect, of course, you are going to need to toggle that a few times. It's quite nice, isn't it? It's quite cool. I'm glad that it's persistent. So many emotes get added to the game and... Uh, and they are like one time use and then you have to spam it again. I suppose this is the same if you want the, the actual spell effect. But of course if you were to go into G-Pose. You could probably pause it just in time for some pictures. Maybe you want to make some Valentione's postcards or something. There's plenty of freeze frames in there that could work. It's quite nice actually. There's some good, good detail on the particle effects. It doesn't look too out of place. And of course, if you didn't want the particle effects at all, you can just have a nice freeze frame. But yeah, loops quite nicely, actually. But uh, obviously, outside of G-Pose, it won't loop at all. It will just keep you in that position. Looking pretty great. Let's go to the house and look at the item. 
So as many of you have probably seen the other video on the cash shop item, or maybe you saw last year's video, uh, the previous year's reward for Valentine's Day was actually this heart-shaped table, which is really cool. You can actually get this on the cash shop as of today, at the time of recording, uh, if you so wish to. But of course, if you picked up a load last year, uh, you should already have this. So the chair itself should marry up to this quite nicely. Let's have a look at it on its own first, though. I bought a few of these. I bought four of them just in case because they're only what a thousand gil so all right okay so this item looks pretty good actually i i don't know what i was going to expect from a heart-shaped chair other than a heart-shaped chair but it looks exactly as you would imagine there are actually some imperfections which i actually really like about this item like the the, the, the padding and the folds in the fabric that's something you don't typically see with a lot of uh items especially housing items Adding that extra bit of detail is really nice, actually, because it's not perfectly upholstered. It looks like, you know, it just looks good. Uh, the back of the chair is actually really quite stunning, isn't it? I love the shape of that with those reaching metal, well, the, the, the metal uh, rivets, let's call them, holding this together and then a heart-shaped back in layers. So there's like a heart and then there's another heart shape and then another heart shape. It's really quite cool, isn't it? And then you've got a heart shape on the side of a chair. It's really cute. Really cute. I think a lot of people will love these. We have a lot of stylized chairs in the game. But this is definitely one of the coolest I've seen. Let's put it on its side like that. And uh, look at the die previews of this, right? So, of course, we can change the color of this item. And it will change the fabric. So one of the things I'm looking forward to most in Dawn Trail is that housing items are supposed to be included in the dual uh, die channel as well. So instead of just having one row of dies, we'll have another row to select from for, like, the wood, I'm hoping. Be really cool. Looks good in a variety of colors. Yeah. And if you wanted to, you could have, like, a cherry pink rather than the bog standard sort of Calibri pink, which I'm guessing they're going for. Or, of course, um, a pastel. Pastels always work nicely. There's Calibri. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they went for Calibri. But, um, obviously, you've got Cherry in the game, which looks very barbified if you're going for that kind of route. Very cool. There's some really, really good options there. But, yeah, the dual die channel is one of my most anticipated features of Dawn Trail. Not just for clothing, but for the housing itself. I don't think anything else dies on the back of that. It's really smart, doesn't it? And of course, this thing is designed uh, to be in tandem with the, the heart table, right? So we could place a few of these at the table. And then we've got ourselves a nice set piece. I suppose you'd actually want to put them either side of the heart, wouldn't you, really? Realistically. I don't know. But they are the same scale, thankfully. It's not like one is massively bigger than the other. Yeah, I think those look quite nice, don't they? Oh, and I've run out of placement items, but you get the idea. And of course, the table itself is diable as well. Um, so if you wanted to match things up, you totally could. So if you wanted both of them pink, for example. What is it? Calibri pink? There we go. Yeah. And there you go. Anyway, let me know what you think about these event items. The event itself, as you will see when you log into the game, uh, there'll be a chat message. Lasts until the 21st of February at 14.59 GMT or uh, the 22nd of February at 1.59 AEDT. So if you want to get yourself some chairs and, of course, this fantabulous new emote, which I really like, log into the game. Make the most out of the um, return campaign as well, the, the free login. Uh, that's also currently available. If you uh, use your free login campaign currently, not only would you have access to the Valention stuff, but there's also the Moogle Tome event on currently as well, the first of two Moogle events. Uh, so if there's any items you want to get, it's really easy this time around. There's lots of really cool um, ways of actually doing it as well. The new Mogpendium system is one of my favorites. Includes things like ocean fishing, not just combat related stuff. Uh, and gates and things like that in uh, in the gold saucer are also counted. So it's never been easier to, to get rewards. Of course, PvP as well. The hidden gorge, uh, gorge achievements are also ripe for the picking. And the uh, Revival Wings community 
is uh, well underway of, of getting those cues uh, almost instant at peak times. Really cool stuff. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. It's so good. I love the little wink as well. Fantastic.